Hello everyone, Paul Richards here with PTZ Optics. In this video we're going to talk about a new YouTube Live feature that's called Low Latency Live Streaming. Um, this was something that was coming up a lot because YouTube Live being kind of in beta still and also uh, free service uh, was tending to have some pretty long latency issues where uh, it was difficult to interact with the chat. Um, when live chatting is such a big part of live streaming, it, being able to respond to your audience. So what YouTube has done is they have created a new feature we're going to look at really quickly. And I'm going to talk about uh, the difference between low latency live streaming and buffering, why you would use one versus the other. So without further ado, let's get started. So we are going to go into this. We're going to dig right into this topic. There's basically two options. You know, option number one is uh, when you're talking about low latency live streaming is to do what um, YouTube is calling optimize for low latency. So um, you can see here there's two options there. Um, this is in the advanced settings of your live streaming tab. Um, so when you set up your live stream, you know, there's all the regular information about title, description, and tags. And then right next to that, you're going to see an advanced tab. And in that advanced tab, you'll see the uh, optimization, the stream optimization settings where you can do either low latency or buffering. Now here are the differences. If you, you, if you are having a huge audience and you've got a lot of live people uh, that might want to be using the chat and you need to respond to those people, then you want to go with the low latency optimization. If you are doing more of like, let's say you're streaming a concert for example, and you want to have a really great recording um, at the end of the day of that live stream, you might want to go with buffering because the, the band's not going to stop and answer questions for chat. Um, so what happens is, is basically when, when there's, there's a, a latency uh, is introduced over the public internet. So when you stream directly to YouTube, there could be a blip here or there. And what YouTube will do is they'll say, hey, look, we're noticing a blip here. Let's, let's introduce a buffer so that instead of actually skipping content, we're just going to slow down our stream because they, they um, and then they have the ability to kind of like smooth out the recorded video. So if you're relying on YouTube to record your video, you may want to optimize for buffering um, so that you can have the best recording possible um, available on demand as soon as your live stream is over. So it really depends whether you need that live interactivity with your audience or you you're really want to have that great um, video recorded to be on demand after your live stream. So those are the two things you need to think about um, when you are live streaming something like this. So um, that's really it guys. We just wanted to be able to kind of show where you can get that and uh, why you'd want to use it for live streaming. Um, if this was helpful for you at all, um, feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We've got a bunch of great uh, tips and tutorials all based on live streaming. We've got a ton of great content on YouTube Live in particular. And then we have free virtual sets like the one I've been presenting from in this video uh, that you guys can take advantage of as well. So thank you for watching this video and have a nice day.